Cable is the son of Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, non X Men member Madeline Pryor, who later becomes the villain known as the Goblin Queen, and another X Man, Jean Grey, who kind of becomes like an adoptive mother, but who also possesses Madeline's memories of raising baby Christopher, at least in the comics. Cable is Nathan Christopher Charles Summers. Most of us just call him Cable. Cable as a baby was kidnapped by Apocalypse and infected with the techno organic virus. This is the only thing that makes him, I guess, kind of weak, but really, he's honestly still amazingly strong, as he can even fend off the techno-organic virus, something that most people can't even do at all, containing it to one side of his body using his psionic powers. That in and of itself is pretty impressive, as like I said, the techno-organic virus is generally known for being unstoppable and usually pretty fast acting. Even with his psionic powers mainly preoccupied as well, Cable is still a hard one to best, as he has so many combatant-based skills that he brings to the table, and he is an experienced time traveler besides. What do you feel is the most powerful power set that X-Men, mutants, non-mutants can have? Any heroes or villains? Polaris is the daughter of Magneto, and while you might not think of Magneto as being an X-Man, considering you know he did start out as an X-Men villain, he has also worked with the team before and even served as a member. A lot of people that have now watched X-Men 97 are learning all about this side of Magneto, this time in Magneto's life when he actually worked with the X-Men. At one point, he was even in charge of a whole new New Mutants crew. Let's not forget that. Magneto may have some questionable methods when it comes to getting justice, but I honestly think at the end of the day, you know, he's just trying to do what's best for mutants. Or at least he's trying to do what he thinks is best for mutant kind in the way that he thinks it should be done. Polaris, like her father, also has magnetic based powers, which, like her father, are also pretty impressive. Polaris is considered an alpha level mutant, but I do think she also shows a lot of potential for being Omega, and she joined the X Men team following the Krakoan X Men elections for the team's role. Roster. Shogo is the adopted son of Jubilee. While he's believed to be a human currently in the comics, also not being Jubilee's biological son, but also it's a little bit early because, you know, mutant powers usually manifest in your teens, he has actually exhibited powers before. Yeah, and he's just still a little kid. Namely, he has had the ability to turn into a freaking dragon. This, however, was a power that was reserved for Otherworld alone. During the Excalibur series from the Krakoan era, Jubilee joined up with the Excalibur team, and she and Shogo ended up in Otherworld. Shogo's imagination, combined with fairy magic, allows him to turn into a dragon while there. However, as I said, because these powers were brought on by that shift in location, Shogo himself only has this ability while he's in Otherworld, so it's limited, you know? And it's also, I don't think it's controllable, I think it just happens. Controversial take, especially because he is a child of two villains, but I wanted to include Graydon Creed on here, because I do feel he's underrated and he is powerful in his own way. At least in terms of how dangerous he can be in the comics. Graydon Creed is not a mutant himself and is not a hero, but like his parents, he is of course more of a villain. But a villain who actually hates mutants, whereas, especially with Mystique, I feel like she's trying to be a villain to help mutants. He was strong from a young age, managing to find a way to survive at the age of 12 after his mother left him, coming to terms with the fact that Graydon would likely never manifest mutant powers and had instead been born, well, basically normal. Even though he's a villain, I feel kind of bad for Graydon Creed just based on how his life started out. It's pretty rough. He is the son of Mystique and Victor Creed. He is strong in terms of his influence and his refusal to stay dead. Graydon has been resurrected multiple times, and he also recently gained cybernetic enhancements that made him more physically strong as well. Olivier Raven is legally known as Olivier LeBeau and is one of the alternate reality children of Gambit and Rogue. Honestly, I feel like there are not enough of these kids out in the multiverse for a couple as famous as Gambit and Rogue, you would normally think that we'd have, you know, a ton of multiversal kids from them, just like across the multiverse. So many kids. Admittedly, I'm not quite sure though that Rogue and Gambit are really the breeding type, so maybe that's why that doesn't exist, but still, they're super popular, so yeah, you would just think it would be, and yet it is not. They seem pretty content right now just having their fur babies in the main continuity, but I digress. There is a reality where they do have kids. Olivier hails from the reality of Earth 41001, the reality of of Gen Next, a group Olivier is a part of. He has powers similar to his mother's, except that he has better control over them and is able to 
choose when and how much power, life energy, and memories he absorbs via contact or doesn't absorb in cases where, you know, he just wants to make physical contact without using his powers. Something that now Rogue can do, but it took her a long time to be able to do that. He can also absorb powers on a more permanent level, although he has less control, it seems, over when that happens. Like his father, he also seems to have some charm based powers as well, which not many people know, but Gambit does have some of that sometimes, depending on who's writing him. Chimera is the daughter of Storm and likely Black Panther, who hails from the alternate reality of 13729. Yeah, sadly, Storm and T'Challa have never actually had a child together in the main continuity. I know, it's tragic. Unless they had a real secret one that, you know, we don't know about yet. You never know. You never know. Something like that could always be happening. Chimera seems to have inherited the powers of her mother, but also shares a connection to the Earth, which allows her to draw on and harness its energy. She's also a skilled tracker and can communicate telepathically with animals. Pretty cool. I'd also assume as you know, she is the daughter of Storm, that she is a skilled combatant as well. As while Storm is more well known for her goddess status and weather manipulation powers, she's also actually an extremely skilled fighter as well. Charles Xavier II is the son of Charles Xavier and Mystique, if you can believe that. I know, it's honestly, it's pretty shocking, but it is a thing. Charles Xavier II was technically born into the reality of Earth 616, where we later find out that while Mystique took the form of Moira when giving birth, Charles actually knew that, you know, he was in a relationship with Raven. She just chose that form while giving birth, so unlike many other instances with Mystique, she wasn't actually manipulating her partner here. Charles Xavier II, though, when we usually come to know him, and he's not just a little baby that we saw once, is all grown up, and is known as being from the alternate future of Earth 13729. When his powers first manifested, he accidentally killed his adoptive mother and ended up later joining forces with his half-brother, Raze, another child of Mystique's sired by Wolverine. Charles Xavier II has a brilliant and conniving mind and like his father is an immensely gifted telepath, capable of using his powers to bend others to his will. Ruby Summers is one of the Summers kids who I do not think gets enough love in the comics, which is why I'm very happy to be talking about her here. She is from the home reality that is shared with Bishop, that's the alternate future known as Earth 1191. Here she is the daughter of Scott Summers and Emma Frost. She is known for being one of the leaders of the Summers Rebellion, having been inspired to carry on Professor X's and the X-Men's Dream and continue the fight for freedom and acceptance of mutant kind, inspired to do so by Layla Miller. Her powers are a combo of her dad's, Scott's, and her mom's, Emma's. Instead of a diamond form, she actually has a ruby quartz form and can also fire optic blasts from her eyes. Like Emma, while in her ruby form, Ruby is almost indestructible. She does not need to eat or drink when she's in her ruby form, and she also does not age either. This is also how Ruby appears to be so young, despite actually being pretty old. Proteus is the son of Moira McTaggart, who before turning into a villain, I would have actually counted more as an X-Men ally, if not a full-blown member at times. Proteus is Kevin McTaggart, son of Joseph and Moira McTaggart. He was one of the members of the super important team on Krakoa known as the Five. The Five is basically a team that was brought together and had their powers utilized in tandem to resurrect fallen and lost mutants. His powers as part of that team are mainly used to warp reality, allowing the non-viable eggs that egg produces to become viable for life. Proteus is considered to be an omega level mutant that requires hosts to survive. Initially, Kevin had a body, but of course now he's just pure energy because he does burn through those bodies, making him not just a powerful psionic, but also honestly a deadly energy vampire as well. Legion is the son of Professor Charles Xavier that was conceived when he had a love affair with Gabrielle Holler, which is where Legion gets his legal last name as his given name is David Holler. Legion is so powerful because he suffers from severe Associative Identity Disorder, where he has more than 100 personas residing within him. Each persona, though, has a number, many have names, and guess what? They each have their own specific power set that show up whenever they take over Legion. Because of this, Legion can do almost anything. His powers seem pretty limitless. He can manipulate matter and time. We've seen him literally time travel and completely warp reality as a result of his vast and diverse abilities and personas. He also has some pretty powerful hair, which I'm happy to say he is still rocking even now in the modern day. Honestly, looking really good and really weird, Legion. <laughs> That's about it. I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Until next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube. Bye.